Members, Mr. Jerry Carroll has been given leave to make a statement on the death of George Floyd, which fulfills the criteria set out in Standing Order 24. If other members wish to be called on this matter, they should do so by standing in their places and continuing to do so. All members called will have up to three minutes to speak upon this subject. I would remind members that I will not take any points of order on this or any other matter until this item of business has been disposed. I call Mr Jerry Carroll. Thank you, Mr Deputy Speaker. First of all, I want to express uh, my sympathy to the family of George Floyd on the death of their loved one. The footage of a police officer putting his knee on the neck of George Floyd, suffocating and killing him while he shouted, I can't breathe, shine a brutal light into the reality of racism and police violence in the United States today. This racism, unfortunately, has been emboldened by the words and actions of Donald Trump, who gave the green light to continue shooting people down in cold blood in America after this brutal killing. Trump, of course, is a man who has done nothing about the continual violence of white supremacists and racist organisations, whilst giving them a nod and a wink all along the way. Isn't it a cruel irony, Mr Deputy Speaker, and a true reflection of life in the United States today, that a black man can be murdered after being accused of forging documents, all the while wealthy whites through tax evasion uh, and other schemes forge their way uh, to billionaire and trillionaire status while exploiting the labour of black people along the way. Today we express uh, our sorrow and our anger over the murder of George Floyd, but unfortunately this uh, has been a common theme in recent years. And we also have to remember Eric Garner, Michael Brown and all those people killed uh, in cold blood. Unfortunately and tragically, too many names to mention today. And so, since the brutal killing of George Floyd, we have witnessed protests all across the United States. People have been bravely standing up to and defying the brutal militarised police state of the United States. And on behalf of all socialists, all progressives, all radicals in Ireland, I want to extend solidarity and support to all those people out demonstrating on the streets against the racist murder machine in the United States. In the 1960s, Mr Deputy Speaker, the black civil rights struggle directly inspired the struggle for change here. And people are still inspired here by the ongoing fight for equality, dignity, rights and justice for black and minority communities in the United States. One world, one struggle, black lives matter. Mr Matthew O'Toole. Thank you, Mr Principal Deputy Speaker, um, and uh, thank you to Jerry Carroll for um, for achieving this uh, matter of the day. Um, we will all have seen over the weekend images uh, from the United States um, that began with the horrific um, murder of George Floyd, a black man who um, came to his death with the knee of a police officer across his neck. It's shocking, it's appalling, and it matters um, to us here. It matters to us all because as Jerry Carroll said, black lives matter. They matter in the United States where, as someone who has, um, feels uh, quite a profound connection to the United States, I've spent some time there, it is true that there, has been, there is a, an endemic and deep strain of racism that, is, that has affected the American Republic since the state was founded. And we, can't, um, we can't forget about that. So as a, as, a, as a jurisdiction here, as an island which is deeply and intimately linked with the United States, we can't uh, turn our eyes, turn, our, you know, turn, our, uh, turn a blind eye to the, to the reality of deep and endemic racism in the United States. M Mr. Principal Deputy Speaker, um, during the Irish famine, the great abolitionist Frederick Douglass paid a visit to Ireland. He lectured all over this island, including uh, in what is now the Northern Ireland. He lectured in Hollywood, Bangor and Lisburn, and he said that while the Irish had been among the worst perpetrators of prejudice against people of colour in North America, they themselves had also experienced prejudice and injustice. The previous speaker mentioned the links between the civil rights movement in North America and the civil rights movement here in Northern Ireland. Well, the reason why Frederick Douglass's words, I think, resonate still today is that Responsibility for all of us, not just in North America, but across the globe. Responsibility falls on us to ensure that we do everything to root out racism, 
racism, which is a cancer not just in the United States, but across societies everywhere. It, it, it's incumbent on all of us to do everything we can to ensure that people of color uh, are treated properly and that the injustice, the centuries old injustice that has afflicted them certainly in North America and elsewhere are properly addressed. So what happens in North America, what has happened this weekend is profoundly important all over the world and I'm glad today that we uh, as a Northern Ireland Assembly which is profoundly connected to North America um, and to the United States will issue a, a strong call in solidarity for the people who are protesting um, in the United States today. Thank you, Mr. Principal Deputy Speaker. Call Mr. Paul Given. Uh, Principal Deputy Speaker, um, can I uh, offer my condolences to the family of uh, George Floyd, father, two daughters, and uh, obviously they are grieving and the loss will be keenly felt most uh, by them. Uh, George was known uh, when I've been reading up about him uh, as the gentle giant, six foot six, this was a big man, uh, had a, a, a glittering career uh, in football and basketball uh, in high school, at Yates High School, led them to championship finals. Uh, and I think it's important that we also remember George for the man. He can be used and is being used for political statements, to attack institutions. And rightly, people need to point out where there are failings. And what happened to George was appalling. Everyone can see that. The way he was treated was appalling. The officer responsible has been arrested, charged with third degree murder, second degree manslaughter. Due process now, I hope, takes its course and, and executes justice very speedily. And that's vital that that happens. But what is not right is the mass destruction that has taken place, the destruction of property. And the encouragement of that kind of protest is something that I wouldn't want to be party to and wouldn't want this assembly to be sending that message out to. So I condemn what has happened to George. But I also condemn the way in which these protests have now turned into a violent mob and is being used to attack institutions and the President of the United States and so on. But let's remember George. Uh, and uh, George is best summed up. And I think it's important that we give a flavour to who we're talking about, not just using him to talk about other things. But George uh, was done a lot of work in Houston, the more I read about this. And he worked uh, in the projects, as they would be, be called in the United States, in, in areas that are deprived, in housing areas. And he was known as a person of peace, a mentor to a generation of young men. His pastor uh, in the Resurrection Church in Houston, in Cooney, known as the Bricks, paid this tribute to him. George Floyd was a person of peace sent from the Lord that helped the gospel go forward in a place that I never lived in. He brought the church to the people. There's a story where he talks about how he pushed the baptism tank into the projects on the understanding the people there would make a decision of faith and then would be baptized where they lived, not needing to go to the church. So I think George is to be remembered for the contribution he made as a Christian, as someone who tackled disadvantage, who brought the church to the people, and now we need to see justice for the terrible way in which his life was ended. Thank you, Principal Deputy Speaker. Thank you. I call Ms. Emma Sheeran. Um, just, I would like to echo some of the, the comments that have been made around the chamber, and I do think we have to be careful about the way that the, the narrative of what's happened is portrayed. George Floyd's death is not the first to be captured on a smartphone and beamed around uh, the world through social media, and that in itself is a tragedy. Systematic racism caused his death, not just one bad apple uh, in an institution. And systematic, systematic racism, just like any form of discrimination, is a disease that hurts not just those that feel uh, the blatant and explicit brutality, but anyone then who has to suffer the comments, the jokes, uh, the, the narrative, the, 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 the comments that are made and are legitimised by an action like what happened to George Floyd. In the north of Ireland, where our own freedom fighters and civil rights organisations were inspired by the demonstrations of the American civil rights movement in the 60s, we stand in solidarity with those whose struggle for equality is still ongoing. 
I am lucky as a child of the 90s that the, the freedoms fought for here in the 60s and 70s allowed me to live a, a life without harassment. But it is deeply unsettling to see that in America, where freedom riders and marchers and sit-ins took the same brave stand, their children's children are not afforded the same luxuries. Mr Doug Beattie. Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Speaker. Um, the images beamed around the world of um, George Floyd being restrained by a Minnesota policeman, pleading for that policeman to take his knee off his neck, fighting for breath, and ultimately dying, are truly horrific. The police officer who perpetrated that was rightly arrested and has rightly been charged with murder, and he will go through due process because he shamed his office on that day. But what was even more disturbing is three of his colleagues stood and watched while it happened. And they are as much to blame as the officer who pressed his knee on the neck of this man who was lying helpless on the floor. George Floyd was a man of colour. He was a black man in a racially charged US where black men are more likely to die in this way. But I didn't see a colour. I saw a man, a helpless man, murdered on our screens. I cannot stand here and support the violence that happened afterwards. I simply cannot and I will not because all it does is create more dead, more devastation, more injured, more victims. We need to remember George if we are going to support the people who want justice for him. Thank you, Mr Speaker. I call Ms Kelly Armstrong. Thank you, Principal Deputy Speaker. I rise today with a lot of sorrow. Um, on behalf of myself and the Alliance Party, we would pass on our condolences to George, George's family and his community. Um, as others have said, the use of police force, the 8 minutes and 46 seconds that that knee was on the neck of a person, and three of those last, the last three of those minutes were when George was unresponsive, um, are shocking to see, to read about and to hear about. And we have absolute empathy with those who have felt anger. But I would like to draw everyone to what George's own brother had said. George's brother, Terence Floyd, um, has called, he's condemned the violence that is happening. He's condemned those protests and said his brother stood for peace. And he's asked everyone to channel anger elsewhere. And that anger should be challenged. Or that anger should be focused on the lack of leadership that is currently happening within the United States and in so many other places across the world where things like racism are taking hold and mean that people are not treated equally. Instead of having a president in, the Ameri in America that is calm, courageous and principled and has great leadership, instead we have a person who fans, fans, sorry, fans the flames of division and racism and bigotry. There is a lot, a lot of things that America could do better. But one of the things that America should be doing better is channeling that anger in a different way. Some of the protests, there's a lot of difference between a protest and looting and raiding and violence for violence's sake. So we absolutely condemn the violence that is taking place. It is time that we take the attention back to what has happened. This is not a police versus community issue. It does show that there has to be transparency and accountability. And we know full well here in this place that our past has shown where police have got things wrong. But thank goodness that we have professionalism and we have a force now that has improved and has learned and has taken from mistakes. And it is time that I know that officer has been arrested and has been charged, but the whole police force in the Minnesota area and other parts of America take a cold, hard look at the type of force that they use against people. Like Mr Beatty has said, we didn't see colour. We saw a man dying on the street with the knee of another person on his neck. That has to stop. That is not right. George Floyd lived until he was 46. 
his family is now grieving, and we are very sorry for that. Mr. Jim Allister. Thank you. Um, anyone who watched the footage could not only be aghast but outraged at what they saw, uh, the deliberate actions leading to the death, nay, the murder of George Floyd. And it is right and appropriate, and I am glad of it, that the perpetrator has been charged uh, with offences, and others look to me as if they likewise should be charged. But what we have then witnessed is the exploitation of that incident to unleash uh, by forces of anarchy sheer terror on the streets of the United States. And I was very disappointed that the member who raised this matter did not have one word of condemnation for that anarchy, which is not honouring the memory of George Floyd or anyone else, but is seeking to exploit the situation for the advantage of anarchists and the far left, with no regard to the memory or the life or the testimony of George Floyd. And instead of condemning that, Mr Carroll told us that he was in solidarity with those bravely standing up to and defying the forces in the United States, and told us that inspired things here. Sadly, it probably did. And one of the things, of course, which we remember the United States for most in terms of our own troubles is the dollars which funded the weapons which armed vile terrorists. And Ms. Shane, they were not freedom fighters. They were vile terrorists of the lowest order who inflicted the most horrendous killings in this community. Indeed, I'd have to say I have no recollection of the United States Congress or any other Congress in any state raising issues in defence of the innocent very often in Northern Ireland. I do not recall the bloodthirsty murder of the corporals in Northern Ireland echoing round in condemnation the legislatures of the United States. But today, we, as human beings, do condemn the murder of uh, George. I only hope it had been reciprocated when we were the victims of horrendous terrorism. Thank you. No other members have indicated that they wish. Oh, well, members should rise in her place. Call Ms. Rachel Woods. Thank you, Mr. Principal Deputy Speaker. I had actually risen at the start. Um, I can want to thank my colleague for bringing this matter to the chamber today. Racism thrives in the company of silence. The tragedy of George Floyd's death, who suffered after a police officer kneeled on his neck for seven minutes in spite of his pleas to stop, has rightly caused anger and protest in Minneapolis and across the world. I stood on those same streets that people are protesting in not nine months ago. As part of the global climate strike outside St Paul's Town Hall, I visited many of the shops that have been looted. People I keep in touch with living in the city are telling me that the protests are generally supported and understandable, touching off some things that had been brewing for a while, but what Minnesota has never seen before is the level of violence. We in the Green Party stand in solidarity with all those, including the Black Lives Matter movement, who campaign against endemic institutional racism, fascism and police brutality. We have seen images of police in the US using cars as weapons, tear gas, beating protesters and targeting journalists. This is all a result of systematic racism, inequality and a populist neo-fascist regime in the form of the Trump administration. A friend in Minneapolis has emailed me on Saturday night stating that if police stops tweeting racist things to fan the flames, we'd be getting on even better. He said to see those tweets coming through in the middle of the night with the police station and the city burning was beyond reproach. We call for the justice for George Floyd and justice for all who have been wronged by those who were sworn to protect them, as this is not the first time that this has happened. We must honour his memory and others by continuing to work harder than ever to end racism, tackle inequalities and build a better future for all. 
I wish to mention some of the last words recorded by Mr. Floyd. It's my face, man. I didn't do something, and I didn't do nothing serious, man. Please, 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 I can't breathe. I cannot breathe, officer. Don't kill me. We have a choice. We can raise our voices and join against the systematic and institutionalised racism across the world and push for those in power to do the same. Thank you. Thank you. As no other members have indicated that they wish to speak, uh, we'll move on to the next item of business. Uh, the next item of business is the consideration stage of the Budget Number 2 Bill. I call the Minister of Finance.